So I noticed Donald Trump's finally making his long-awaited appearance in this country. Yay. I'm actually kind of excited. A part of me wants to see the outburst from tolerant left, the diverse city of London turning out in all its glory to protest Trump, sorry, fear, hate. Apparently Trump's the avatar of this, so yay for him. At least he gets to go down in history as being memorable. I mean, it's not like he's going to be remembered for being instrumental in the peace talks starting between North and South Korea, or, you know, that whole employment getting better thing, or the economy growing. No, he's going to be remembered for being the avatar of hate and fear, which might not be such a bad thing. History has a fantastic way of remembering everything, including all the special little people that go out of their their way to be vindictive at every opportunity, or look like virtuous dipshits, or possibly over-the-top politically correct dipshits. In the case of one of the people we're going to be talking about today, and that would be Sadiq Khan, who's so busy pontificating about how London will turn out to show their support, express their freedom of speech, as is their right, and I fully support that, to stand up against hate, all the while his crime stats are being waved in front of him, and he seems to not notice. Considering the rise of crime in your city, knife attacks, many other different types of attack in fact, you'd think you'd want to do your damn job. But apparently, you feel the need to inject yourself into the conversation about Donald Trump's business visit. It's not being treated so much as a state visit this time around, is it? Which actually I think is a better thing, because this might encourage more discussion on trade. Which, if done so, might get people to start in the Parliament especially, to start getting behind the idea of leaving the Customs Union, because honestly, staying a part of that would also fly in the face of the vote, and I know there are going to be some cynics that now say, ah oh, yes, we just voted leave, we didn't go into the details of it. Okay, well here's the detail. We voted to leave the EU. The Customs Union is a part of the EU. We voted to leave the EU. Anyway, I have an article for this, and also I want to address Owen Jones, because why not? Sadiq Khan takes dig at Donald Trump, saying protesting Brits should exercise free speech when he visits UK. I actually, in all seriousness, hope the turnout for the protests, which will lead to a discussion about Owen Jones, are huge. I actually do. And if he ever gives any kind of speech, and people are listening or shouting, they are going to make themselves look even more stupid and ridiculous, which I'm okay with. Show how tolerant you are by shouting him down. But I don't think he's giving any public speech, so that possibly won't happen. Although I would love to see that. I would love to see some people try and storm the stage and watch as the Secret Service knock them the fuck out. The London Mayor said he will see an open and diverse city that has chosen hope over fear if he comes to the capital during July visit. I'd be inclined to disagree with you slightly, and I have to draw back on the aforementioned crime stats. I don't want to go anywhere near your city right now. If my sister has to go to hospital for an appointment there, I tell her not to. I tell her to get it somewhere else. Have that specialist go outside of London, because your crime rate at this moment in time is terrifying. We are in a position right now where we cannot defend ourselves. So those criminals who are committing crimes unsurprisingly, imagine my shock using the very things that are illegal, are doing it to people who cannot defend themselves in any way, shape or form. Because if they do, they'll probably get charged with excessive force. Or if they manage to turn the knife back on the person who used it, they'll probably be charged with stabbing someone. And I don't like this idea, by the way, of having Trump pigeonholed as fear. Him being the representative of fear. You don't have a leg to stand on obvious reasons. But when you look at what he has done, and I have to draw on a video by Styx Hexenhammer. Trump just got his seventh key to the White House. He probably wins re-election. This counts as a major foreign policy success. He had six keys already. Jobs, job markets, uh, taxes, uh, uh, care, you know, the person running is an incumbent. Now this, he's, he had three others. If you go through the 13 keys to the White House, I think I'm counting seven for Trump, which is what he needs. Now, of course, you could have some disaster happen in the next couple of years that derails that. The economy could take a steep downturn. That would uh, remove a key. Uh, you could have a depression. Uh, you know, jobs could, the job market could collapse or something. We could enter a major war. But uh, barring one of those things, I now predict that Donald Trump is re-elected in 2020. Uh, because, it's, you know, unless one of those things happens, he, he has all the markers he needs. He probably gets an eighth key there somewhere as well if he has a major domestic policy success. Who would have believed his foreign policy of whipping his dick out and saying, my guns are bigger than yours, would work. He applied the pressure, and it worked. That, in and of itself, I was going to make a video on it. As I was going to say, it is, in and of itself, an achievement. 
much like the tax breaks. Do you remember that? No, I don't think you do. Nobody reported on it over here, to be honest. Much like nobody truly reported on the <laughs> State of the Union, which was laughable. His speech was brilliant. Make America great again for all Americans. Because you bitch me. African American unemployment stands at the lowest rate ever recorded. <laughs> because you bitch me. But watching the Democrats, oh wow. Pouty children, all of them. Anyway, Sadiq Khan has taken another swipe at his arch enemy, Donald Trump. Of the two of you, who do you think is going to get elected for a second term? At his current rate, although recent events might stymie that a little. Donald Trump will get a second term. You will not. Unless the Conservatives run with somebody and use hate again. The Goldsmith election, you only won because they tried to smear you. Although you have shared platforms with hateful people, so it's quite ironic that you would talk about someone being hate when you shared platforms with terrorists. Quite astonishing, really. The trip will take place on Friday the 13th, after Mr. Trump stops off in Brussels for a summit of NATO leaders. But Mr. Khan, who has clashed repeatedly on several occasions with Donald Trump, issued a thinly veiled warning that he will face angry protesters. I think he knew this. He faces them every freaking day where he is, in the White House. I think it's quite interesting, to be honest. And I don't think it's something new. It just shows a lot of people have far too much free time on their hands when they should be in the workhouses or in the job centres, and not sponging off their dads. The mayor tweeted, If he comes to London, President Trump will experience an open and diverse city that has always chosen unity over division and hope over fear. Well, it's funny you should mention that, because this, again, shows how out of touch you are, much like those in America that thought Hillary would win. The major cities voted for Hillary, for the most part, but the rest of the country, you know, the electoral college that represents the other states that aren't spoken of that much, the bulk of the country, yeah, they voted against that because they're out of touch. And I won't obviously blame all of London because I can be sure there are some reasonable people in London. Twisted Barbie, I remember you. Certainly when I spoke about Brexit in an ill way with regards to London. Not everyone in London would agree with you. But much like with Brexit, London voted majority to remain. But it was so out of touch and people thought it was a foregone conclusion. They overlooked the fact that the rest of England existed. It's where some idiots tried to get London to secede from England. Right. Good luck with that. This out-of-touch behaviour shows how arrogant you are. It's why you never win. And okay, you won your mayor job. That <laughs> job. You're doing such a fantastic job, by the way. Perhaps you should focus on that instead. And not focus on Donald Trump. Perhaps you should do the very British thing. And protesting is one thing. But then there's the other thing. The thing that we Brits like to do best. During times of war, when we were attacked, what did we do? We carried on as if nothing happened. We didn't let it stop us. But we also do a fantastic job at showing them who's best. If when Donald Trump visits, all he sees is a sea of angry, angry millennials, he's just gonna think this country is fucked. Then again, if ever there was an opportunity to totally fuck up a chance of a trade deal, it would be the behavior of the local populace, sorry, local, the indigenous populace going out of their way to be abusive to the guy who could give us trade deals worth billions. Then again, I'm sure a lot of you would want us to stay in the EU, so you wouldn't want that. Why have something good, right? When you could just shit all over it, like a good baby. <sighs> he will also no doubt see that Londoners hold their liberal values of freedom of speech very dear. We do. We absolutely do, which is why there are a number of instances where I found it truly astonishing how far we're willing to contradict that and yet claim we have freedom of speech. It is quite astonishing. I think in the last two weeks I've covered two separate incidents where freedom of speech has been completely stomped on. Whether it be the Liverpudlian girl who got the conviction for posting rap lyrics, or Dankula himself getting that £800 fine. He should have gone to prison. I'm going to batter your prostate. And just because I want to go back on it, you said a diversity that has always chosen unity over division and hope over fear. Well, America chose unity as well. The majority of the states that voted for him were united in this and hope. They hoped he would shake up everything. And he did. By you slapping the label of division and fear on him, you are showing yourself to be narrow-minded. Now, I'm not going to deny Trump is flawed. 
the things he's retweeted, yeah. The completely unpresidential behaviour, yeah. But damn it, he's got shit done. He actually has, and you can't refute it. His results are better than yours. Yours are laughable. The London mayor has repeatedly said that US presidents should not get a state visit when he comes, and the pair have fallen out repeatedly online. I think he should get a state visit. I think anyone that comes to this country should. Any of them. I honestly believe that. I'm sure someone can now say, oh, what about this president or this prime minister? He's a massive racist. Or what about Putin? He tried to kill people. Even though the evidence now is starting to show otherwise, which is why it's gotten very quiet about that subject. I fully believe in us proving we are better. And I believe that we should. It is down to people to choose to protest, then do it. Which now brings me on to Owen Jones. I do want to continue with this article, but at the same time, I don't want you guys to be stuck here listening to me talk about how I think Donald Trump should get a state visit, because it is the right thing to do. And I know about Sadiq Khan not being such a fan of the travel ban, but again, Obama introduced that. He was trying to do it anyway. It just got steam under Trump because he was very vocal. Whereas Obama was a bitch actually bitch made president it's quite astonishing but anyway owen jones is organizing a protest and i saw it on facebook it made me laugh but it says protest trump's visit on the 13th and the 14th of july it has been announced donald trump is coming to britain on friday the 13th join a together against trump tat mass protest in towns and cities across britain against bigotry hatred and racism now i did a video on owen jones early in the year and i won't defend some of the things donald trump has said there are some things I can't refute. But you're obsessed, and all under the guise of basically standing up against an oppressive, racist, hateful bigot, who, and I believe you even said it in an interview on Good Morning Britain, you talked about his grabbing women's genitals as if it was rape. You are still this thick, and I think your views on Trump are borderline obsession. You are going out of your way to protest a guy coming to the country on a business visit. If it was a state visit, I think this would be a lot bigger. But it's just a business one. I see no reason for people not to protest, just to be clear. And as long as people aren't being violent towards the president, or trying to stop his car from getting into Downing Street, whatever that's called, there's a name for it and I can't remember. As long as they're not doing what a lot of protesters that are left-leaning have done, which has gotten them all into a lot of trouble recently and over the last year, that is, getting violent or breaking the law, then I see no problem. And I don't really think Trump cares too much, because again, it's a business visit, so hopefully it'll be trade, which I think is fantastic. We can iron out some deals and have them signed, well, have them prepped to be signed the moment the transition period comes in. Brilliant because I think that makes it so that we will have a very simple and easy transition to freedom from EU shit, from an EU that is trying to take control of our country. Which sounds a bit tinfoil hatty, but come on. We have no power in it. And then people will go, oh, but it's a democracy. No, it fucking isn't. Don't give me that shit. Anyway, his Stop Trump protest. There's a load of pictures I noticed on a Stop Trump coalition page, but also there is a conversation I noticed on the protest Trump page, and I'm not going to be putting it on the screen because it's absolute hell. A lot of the discussions include BBC interviews that Owen Jones has given, but also lots of pictures people have taken, and I think it's just rather cute. And one of the things that, by the way, did make me chuckle the most was that there was a petition on that page to declare the 2016 referendum null and void due to <laughs> foreign interference, to which the government has responded because it exceeded 10,000 votes. The referendum was one of the biggest democratic exercises in our history. The government is clear that the result should be respected. There has been no evidence of successful interference. I'm not linking this, by the way, because I don't really see the point. Now, as a final thing, excluding Owen Jones's obsession with Donald Trump, I honestly think if Donald Trump pulled his dick out, Owen would open his mouth. Owen has a leg to stand on with a few of his comments, but not enough to be able to then say that he represents all those things that hate bigotry racism and all this he doesn't have a leg to stand on on that individual comments yes they are bad not indicative of him being a racist his retweeting of britain first does not make him a racist it makes him fucking stupid for retweeting it even if what britain first tweeted in the first place was accurate i don't know i never saw the tweet to finish i don't stand against donald trump and don't really care for the protest, although I am keen to see how it plays out. I might even go to London if I'm able to obtain a knife vest, just so I can watch it. It would be rather interesting to see how it plays out. But most of my intrigue centers around the business element, 
So when people like Sadiq Khan use these terms about him being hate, fear, and Owen Jones doing the same thing with buzzwords that basically try and silence people, it doesn't work. It just makes us look narrow-minded. Now, hopefully Trump understands that these two dickheads don't represent the entire country. While London may be united to some extent, London does not, as the 2016 referendum showed, it does not represent the United Kingdom. You go ahead and exercise your freedom of speech by protesting, hopefully legally. The last thing I'd want to see are riots and more poor defenseless bins getting knocked over in the name of freedom of speech. But I'm sure a bin will suffer at the hands of some woke millennials. Anyway, Sadiq Khan, shut your fucking mouth and do your fucking job. Get your fucking crime rate down you pathetic dickhead. Stop spending money on pet projects and build houses that you haven't been building so people can stop being moved out of London to other nowhere near areas because you are not doing your job, you incompetent shit. And Owen Jones, the one thing I would love to see more than anything in the world is for you to sit down with Donald Trump. I would love to see this. I would love to see you interview him because I want to know how well you handle being sat in front of one of the most powerful men in the world, when the best you can do is organize a protest behind many, many gates. Anyway, this has all been rather fun. I had intended on covering the entire article, but it turns out me rambling for however long this has been now. It's been quite cathartic. So I hope everyone has a lovely day, and thank you all for listening.